So now rumors of dysfunction inside the vice president's office reports that more high profile staffers are eyeing the exit over concerns they'll be branded a Harris person. Wow. Uh, Mark Teese and former speechwriter George Bush and a Fox News contributor. Mark, how you doing? Good morning to you. Uh, this was all Good in the morning, Washington Bill. Post over the weekend. Uh, I'll read you one quote. I mean, this is this is tough stuff. It's clear that you're not working with somebody who's willing to do the prep and the work. With Kamala, you have to put up with a constant amount of soul-destroying criticism and also her own lack of confidence. So you're constantly sort of propping up a bully, and it's not clear, not really clear why. Um, listen, that person was unnamed. I mean, if they put their name on it, they probably wouldn't work again under this administration. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these are not conservatives that are criticizing her from without. These are people who went to work for her, who believed in her, who wanted to help her, uh, joined her cause, and they're 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 quitting or preparing to quit and and complaining to the media. And look, it's entirely possible that these staffers are a bunch of millennial cupcakes. Uh, you know, that wouldn't be unheard of. But you know, if if she were succeeding in her job. Uh, they might be able to put up with it. They might be willing to put up with it. There are plenty of world leaders in, in history who've been tough to work for, but she's not succeeding in her job. She's failing at her job. Uh, her, her approval rating uh, in, the, in a recent, uh, recent poll was at 28.7%. I mean, that's like 10 points lower than Donald Trump ever was. You showed those pictures at the border. That was the job she was supposed to take care of. Um, and so she's, she's mean, and it, people will put up with mean. They're not likely to put up with mean and incompetent or mean and lazy. <laughs> As, as that staffer seemed to suggest that she doesn't even read her briefing paper. Well, I mean, mean and productive is a, is a whole different thing, as you point out there. You know, I was thinking about vice presidents. You know, you know I, I can't remember the mainstream media because we've had various reports out of Washington being this tough on a vice president. Going back to Dan Quayle, they hated Dan Quayle, but I mean, but they weren't this ruthless <laughs> with him. Well, he's, uh, but uh, it, this is probably the worst vice president we've had in, 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 in modern times. And look, why is this important, Bill? Because, you know, it, it's not just, you know, the, the vice president really doesn't matter all that much, right? No one votes for the vice president. But they may have to vote for the vice president if the president can't run again in 2024. I mean, the, but the problem is not just that Kamala Harris's approval rating is, is plummeting. It's that Joe Biden's approval rating is plummeting. And she's the backup plan. You had a poll, Suffolk University uh, USA Today poll, showed two-thirds of Americans don't want, uh, don't want Biden to run again. Uh, well, what are they going to do if Biden doesn't run again? Why, why is Biden president today? Because they couldn't find anybody better in that field. Well, if Biden doesn't run, they're still stuck with the same field. Uh, Kamala Harris is like their best alternative. That's not very good. So mm. it's bad news for the Democrats you, if she can't perform. Here is USA Today approval, disapproval, 28 percent on the approval rating. That's um... Uh, that's low. Yeah. I, I got 30 seconds, but the Dana Milbank column from over the weekend, same paper, Washington Post, says the media treats Biden as badly as or worse than Trump, and here's proof. And that was retweeted by Ron Klain, the chief of staff. Uh, what did you make of that, Mark? <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the the deep conservative bias in the media is working against Joe Biden. Look, I mean, they're, they're, he's not getting bad press because of conservative bias in the media. He's getting bad press because he's doing a very, very bad job as president. Um, and and the reality is, I mean, I, one of my most fa my most popular columns of the Washington Post are my annual 10 best, 10 worst things the president mm -hmm. did list. And I'm writing them right now. I'm trying to be fair to, to Joe Biden. I'm struggling to come up with 10 really good things that he did as president, <laughs> and I'm having a hard time paring back uh, to, to 10 on the on the worst list. Wow. Uh, so if you want, want better press, do a better job. <laughs> uh, how many are you up to? Uh, have, you, have you hit five? <laughs> in terms of the best? No, he's got a few in there. Uh, I'm, I'm at about eight. So if anyone has some suggestions of good things uh, Joe Biden did, send them my way. Uh, the, the, the worst list, I may have to break it up into foreign policy and domestic and do two, two, two different ones because there's such a... I mean, has it, there's never been a president who's, do, who's fallen this far this fast in my lifetime. It's mm, the worst wow. first year of a presidency well, I've ever experienced. Some would argue it's a target-rich environment. Mark Thiessen, nice to see you on a Monday. Yes, Thank indeed. you, Mark. I got one from Mark Ovi, like, no lockdowns for Omicron. Ooh. If Biden sticks to that, you could put that on your list, Mark. Consider it. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you.